when bad packaging happens to good products. Mrs. Carolyn Hirons did a video this past week about this exact topic. This is my nominee for Green Beauty. Josh Rosebrook Nutrient Day Cream in the new packaging. I love this product, which was what's ironic about this, is that when I got this product in the Beauty Heroes box, I mentioned that I was very skeptical of this packaging because I already had enough hard enough time using this packaging. So, needless to say, my pump does not work. Now, should I want to try to get it out? What I have to use to get it out is this and this narrow top. Bad packaging. Bad packaging happens to good products. That product has gums in it, so it just tends to want to stick to the sides. And it's just not, I would love to see it in one of those flip tops. You squeeze it out but I know that's not on brand, right? I know that's what happens so many times, I feel like, where it's like they get attached to the branding that they've made and they forget about the consumer experience. I don't know, I mean, I, I understand the struggle all too well. There was a packaging I wanted to use for face mask alchemy that was super sleek and cool and trendy. And um, when I reached out to some people to ask them about you know, their thoughts, they were kind of just like, yeah, it's super cool, but the consumer experience is not gonna be as nice as the packaging you have now. So, I get it, I get it. So remember last week I talked about this new plant in my house obsession that I have? Well, it's getting even more complicated now because I've decided to uh, paint the kitchen cabinets as well as paint the whole house. Here are some of the colors in the running. Rock bottom, which is this one. I know, it's so dark, but I'm gonna paint the kitchen cabinets white, and um, then there's gonna be all the plants everywhere, and we have really high vaulted ceilings that are painted white. And we get a lot of light in our place, so I feel like, I feel like it could work. Blue Endeavor. Stunning Shade, I guess that's what it's called. Crucible and Coastal Dusk. I really like, co I think the two top for me right now are either Coastal Dust, Obsidian Glass, or whatever that one is. Obsidian Glass and Rock Bottom. Which one do you guys like? Yeah, so we live in a place, it's 750 square feet. We have two bedrooms, one bathroom. Um, my husband has wanted to move recently just because he feels like it's really tight, cramped quarters. But my thing is that I don't want to spend too much time inside. I'd rather us be playing outside. And if it's feeling cramped, then we just need to get rid of more of our stuff. So I just, I kind of really into the tiny house concept. Um, and we live in a really outdoor area, so I just don't understand. I don't want more house to clean. All you house cleaners out there know what I'm talking about. So I wanted to point out a blog post that Leilani did uh, just this past week about um, your own reflection and your um, connection to that. And she talked about how when she had cystic acne that uh, it was really painful for her to look in the mirror and she really shunned her appearance. And that really resonated with me. I'll link it below if you want to read it. Um, and know a lot of you love Leilani products and just her in general, so I thought I would mention it. It really resonated with me because at the time that my melasma was really out of control because I was surfing all the time, I can totally relate to that. I can totally relate to shunning the mirror, to apologizing for your appearance, to constantly be on edge about people making comments. I remember one day when I was working in a coffee shop, this guy being like, what's wrong with your face? And me being like, thanks bro, thanks. Then I had to field all the comments of, why don't I just wear more sunscreen? So anyway, it's just um, it's just some really positive language about uh, learning to accept your appearance, and I, I just thought it was really nice if you want to read it. So Beck Winters of the Beck Winters channel on YouTube tagged me to do this five products I can live without. Um, I also wanted to point out that CJ from C's Beauty Blog did this tag, so I'm gonna link both of those below in case you want to go check them out. So five 
beauty products that I can live without. Uh, the first one right off the top of my head is balms. Balms is a moisturizer. I can definitely do without any type of balm as a moisturizer. I think the worst my skin ever did was when I was using a balm as a moisturizer. Um, number two, expensive oil cleansers. No, I just, I don't want a bunch of blended oils that I'm gonna wipe off that's like $85. Like, I get it. I get it. There's a luxury component to it, but you know, my skin is doing really nice with um, a very few selection of products and I just don't need any more expensive oil cleansers because that's the one thing I think that you can DIY is a, is a really nice oil cleanser. Number three, products over $100. I've mentioned this before, but that's my cap for what I will spend on one product alone. I will not spend over $100 on a product. It's just because I feel like products over $100 get into the range of consumer perceived results. I don't tend to be that patient. Uh, I don't, I, I don't know. Just, I'm not doing it. I'm not spending over $100 on a product. It's just me. Number four, lip scrubs. I do not want any more lip scrubs. My lips, they don't feel like they need to be scrubbed. Uh, you know, oftentimes it's sugar and coconut oil. I just don't get it. You could make that yourself. Super simple, easy DIY. And oftentimes I find that those really thick, thick butters that they use to kind of soften the sugars end up giving me little breakouts right here. So yeah. No sugar lip scrubs for me. Especially not some that cost like $40. So lastly, number five, uh, that would probably be products that treat melasma. Uh, I just went to the dermatologist recently. We, we rehashed the melasma conversation. We went over the options um, and I read through all the, I came home, I read through all the literature again. There are times I really wanna combat it uh, more aggressively. And what at the very bottom and very tiny, tiny small print is if you stop using these products, if you go back out in the sun, uh, regardless of wearing sunscreen, your melasma will return. I can't do it, friends. I just can't commit to the type of products, the type of chemicals they use to lighten it, only to know that if I stop using it or that if I go back in the sun when I live in the tropics, uh, it's going to come back. So, yeah. There you go, my, my five. Um, first of all, I wanted to thank Beck Winters for tagging me. I don't know why I never realized that she had a channel. If you don't watch her, you need to. She's amazing. She um, is right up our alley, hilarious, smart. What can I say? Um, totally the kind of girl you guys want to watch. And um, one thing I wanted to point out is I never realized that she had a channel. So if you watch me and you have a channel and I haven't come to support you, please let me know in the comments below. Just be like, hey Marie, you've never checked out my channel. Because it is not intentional. I would love to come and watch your channel and support you because that's what this community does. Let's do the Science 180 and talk about soap. Welcome back to the Science 180 where we are indeed talking scientific studies. Now, before we jump into today's topic, I want to make it clear, I am not defending high pH cleansers, nor am I really advocating for the use of soap. I'm more intrigued and I love to say, hmm, 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 right? Skeptic for life. So what started all this skepticism was the Iuna Bar Soap that came in the Beauty Heroes box. Now, normally I would just run away from soap on my face. Ugh, too high a pH. No way. However, I tried the soap, because Beauty Hero sent me the box, and I actually enjoyed it. And I actually find myself reaching for it. So it's at that point that I start to say, hmm. Uh, and so I mentioned last week that I had found this study called, the long-term use of soap does not affect the pH maintenance mechanism of human skin. It was published in the Skin Research and Technology in 2015. That's right current baby. Now, like most research studies, they start off the study by laying some groundwork so that you'll be familiar with the topic they're talking about. They point out that the human skin has a pH of around 5. They mention that there are many factors that affect skin pH. And they tie it all together by saying that human skin is incredibly smart and able to balance and recalibrate the pH 
no matter what we throw at it. Now a bit of background um, about scientific studies is a lot of times you're going to find them quoting other scientific studies. And this is kind of a way of them acknowledging they know what else has been said in the market. So let me tell you a little bit more of the background that they lay so that you can really understand why they did the study the way they did. So first they start off with the fact that people like to wash their body with soap based cleansers. Then there was a rise of concern over skin breakdown and the pH of products. This gave rise to the pH controlled synthetic detergents or surfactants. More research showed that the pH of a cleanser also affects the pH of skin. Now more research showed that skin was actually able to rebalance itself quicker when being exposed to soap based products than synthetic pH products. This gave rise to the concern that these synthetic surfactants were being deposited into the skin and that that itself was what was causing the skin um, to have a difficulty in maintaining its pH balance maintenance. Woo! That was a lot. Are you still with me? All right. Now the way they conducted this study was they recruited 43 Japanese volunteers. 21 of them had been using a soap based cleanser for the last five years. They classified that as the pH being around 10 at a 5% solution. The other group of 22 had been using a mild acid cleanser. They classified that as a pH around 5.6 to 6.4 at a 5% solution. Now essentially the Participants had to refrain from putting anything on their arm. They came in, they washed their forearm with a bar of soap. Then they had the pH of their forearm measured at one hour, three hour, six hours, and during that six hours um, afterwards, they had to refrain from sweating, basically doing anything that would affect the pH of the skin. Now, at the end of the study, they found there was no statistical difference in the way that the people that had been using soap-based cleansers and the people had, that had been using mild acidic cleansers, there was no statistical difference in the way their skin rebalanced itself, leading them to come to the conclusion that the long-term use of soap did not affect the pH balancing maintenance mechanism system. If you wanted to play devil's advocate, there's a lot of loopholes maybe in this study. However, the one thing that I thought was interesting, which is why I brought this study up when I talked about the Iuna bar soap, was this quote. During regular use of soap, the contact time of the surfactant to the skin is very short and is followed by rinsing with water. This result may suggest that the penetration of soap during regular use has less effect and that the buffer capacity of the stratum corneum far exceeds the amount of acid necessary to transform residues of the surfactant. So essentially they're saying that because soap is so quickly on your face and off your face and there's a limited amount of water use that essentially your skin can handle it and it doesn't really affect it in the negative way that maybe a um, synthetic surfactant cleanser might. And I found this very interesting because I've used pH balance products that are drying and um, I've used cleansers that take a lot of time to get off. And this was one thing that was refreshing to me about this Iuna soap. I wiped it on and I quickly washed it off. And there was no excessive massaging, no, no excessive amount of water contact. So what was the final thing that they said? The long-term continuous use of a soap-based cleanser does not affect the pH maintaining mechanism of human skin. And there are no differences in skin surface pH and changes in skin pH induced by exogenous factors. Again, not a defense of high pH cleansers or soap, merely just a hmm. Now I will leave you with the Maui Minute and I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving and I will see you back next week. Bye. Hi baby. Are you having fun?